Welcome to B&B RV. We are located at 8101 East 40th Avenue in Denver, Colorado. Today, we'll be walking you through our 24 foot Class C with no slide outs, our 2024 Gulfstream Conquest 6237. We're gonna start here on the outside, uh, work our way around and then we'll show you around on the inside. The first compartment right here just houses your house batteries for the RV in the back here. Um, no real reason to get into that compartment for anything. Um, moving down here, this, this compartment houses your generator. Um, so your generator is gonna be to power any of the 110 items uh, if you're not plugging into shore power. That includes your air conditioner, microwave, TV, and any of the 110 outlets. Everything else in there is running off of your house batteries. Uh, you can charge your house batteries while you're driving, uh, if you turn your generator on, or if you plug into shore power. Moving down here, so this is your fresh water tank fill. So this uh, comes equipped with a, an onboard fresh water tank. Uh, it'll come full for your rental if you need to top that back off. Uh, this is gravity fill. Uh, so you just open that lid here, put your hose in there, and then it'll pour out of there once it's full. You do have a tank level gauge on the inside that'll tell you when that's getting low. Below that is an outdoor shower. So in your storage compartment, you should have a, a hose that'll connect here in the middle. And then you have a hot and cold water faucet on this side and a little handheld sprayer. This is your cable hookup. So if your campsite has a, a cable option, uh, we provide a coax cable. It'll just hook up to the source and then hook up here at the cable satellite hookup. Um, change the source on your TV, do a channel scan, and then you can pick up some, some cable channels there. It also has an antenna on board, so if you don't have the cable hookup and you're relatively local, you can pick up some of those over-the-air channels uh, simply by choosing your TV, again, doing a channel scan, uh, and picking up those channels. Moving down, we have a couple of water connections here. Um, we have what we call the city water connection, so if you have the spigot at your campsite, uh, you'll take the provided water hose, hook it in there, and then this, you just pop the little lid off, kind of hold that hose up to there and then screw that down. Once that's hooked in and turned on, uh, it will feed everything in there, your sink, your shower, and your toilet. And that does bypass the internal system. Uh, the black tank flush, uh, we'll just stay away from that altogether. No need to worry about that at all. And then this vehicle takes just regular unleaded gasoline. Down below your fuel fill is where you empty out your waste holding tanks. So you have a black tank for your toilet wastewater and a gray tank for your sink and your shower wastewater. You have a dump hose stored in your bumper, so you'll just pull that rubber square off of there, pull that dump hose out. That'll attach down below just like the cap goes on. So a little twist to the left, your cap comes off, a little twist to the right, your dump hose is attached there. The other end is gonna go into your dump hole. The handles are color coded, so you wanna pull the black one first for your, your toilet wastewater. You just grab that and pull that toward you, let that all drain, close it, pull the gray one second, so that soapy sink and shower water can kind of help rinse that hose out for you. Then once you're done, you can put everything away. You should find some chemical packs under your bathroom sink. Uh, flush one of those down the toilet afterwards. That'll kind of help everything break down in there, but also keep everything smelling fresh. We do have an RV 101 video uh, going into a little bit more detail on that. Uh, so if you need a little bit further explanation, check out that video. Around back here, we have your electrical hookup. So if you have a 30 amp plug uh, at your campsite, You'll have an electrical cable that comes with the RV. The end with the ring will connect right here. That ring just screws down to uh, secure that to the RV. And then the other end is gonna hook up to your 30 amp at your campsite. We also provide a 110 adapter that will slide on the end of that 30 amp and plug into a regular 10 outlet. Uh, if you're at a friend's house or family or if the campsite only has a 110 option. The ladder here is really just for maintenance. Uh, the no patio or anything up there recommend uh, renters staying off the roof. Uh, this does have a backup camera uh, that shows up in your rear view mirror there. Definitely recommend still having a spotter if you guys are doing any backing up or anything like that. Um, this is your storage compartment for this vehicle. So you can access this either from the back here uh, or from the passenger side. You have a couple of bins in here uh, and then a, a camping table. So you'll also find your camping chairs, uh, water hose, coax cable, power cable, all the stuff that is provided in that free hospitality package in this compartment. Here on the passenger side, that is the other access to that storage compartment. You can see it's pretty large. Um, again, water hose, coax cable, all that kind of stuff will be stored in there. Moving down, you have a couple of 110 plugs. Uh, so generator or plugged into shore power, you can power those. Uh, this will just be a vent for your furnace. 
Uh, this is just a vent for your water heater here. Uh, and then your propane is stored down below here. Um, so there is a gauge on the side here that you'll use to monitor the tank level on your propane. On the entry door, let's go take a look. The cab of the RV is going to look pretty similar to what you've seen in your personal vehicle. Uh, you have a stereo here, uh, heat, air conditioner, that kind of stuff. Your rear camera actually displays up on the rear view mirror here as you're driving. Uh, and then when you put it into reverse as well. A uh, couple of unique features about this vehicle. Um, you do have a tow haul button here. Um, so if you're going up through a mountain pass, let's say, uh, need a little bit more power from your engine, you can simply push that button and it'll automatically drop you down a gear. Um, you can also use that as you're coming down to help you slow down. Uh, there's also a manual mode. So if you're in drive and you drop it down to the M for manual, there is a plus and a minus right here on the gear shift as well. Um, the other cool feature is they have what they call an emergency start. So if you leave your headlights on or something like that and run down your engine battery, uh, behind me over here is our emergency start switch. So with that one, you just push and hold the, the switch. Uh, then you can turn your key and that'll jump the engine batteries from the house batteries of the coach there. Just inside your entry door, you have a few switches down here. Um, so this first one is just a stairwell light uh, above me. You do have a step light down here. That switch is on your main control panel. We'll go over in a second. And then the big red switch here is your main battery disconnect. So if you turn that off, you lose power to everything back in the house. So we recommend just keeping that on the whole time. And then above the entry door here is our main control panel. In the top left of your control panel, you'll see your generator hours there. Um, that's where you keep track of how many generator hours you have used. Uh, to start that, you'll have a start stop switch next to it. So you'll just push and hold the start button. You'll see that orange light start flashing. Once that orange light turns solid and you actually hear the generator kick on, we can let go of that start switch. Give it about 20 or 25 seconds for the relay to bring power back here. Uh, our microwave is gonna beep. You'll see the lights come on on there and that'll be the indication that we have power from the generator. One more time, the generator is going to be for anything 110. So your air conditioner, microwave, your TV, and any of those 110 outlets if you're not plugging into shore power. Now, everything else in here is running off your house batteries, so you will have to monitor that as well. If you're dry camping, the best way to do that is from the solar controller located in this cabinet here. Just make sure that system stays at 12 volts or higher. If you see it get into the low 12s, you can start your engine, um, start your generator, or plug into shore power. Beside your generator is some tank levels. Uh, we touched on the propane uh, being uh, on the outside, so you just have to check that from there. And then these are for your waste holding tanks. The first two here, your gray, is for your sink in your shower waste holding tank. As you push that button, you'll see the gauge light up here, uh, empty one third, two thirds, and full. So gray tank is first uh, for your sink in your shower. Your black is for your toilet wastewater. You also have your, your fresh water, so your onboard fresh tank level there, so you can keep track of that. And then there is a battery monitor on there as well. Below that is a few light switches. Um, so your awning lights, you have a patio awning on the passenger side. The awning light is just a rope light underneath there. Uh, step light is the one that we were looking at down below. Uh, your porch light. So on the outside of the RV above your entry door, there's another little light there for your porch light. The ceiling light is the main light for the living space here. Next in line is your water heater. So the water heater runs off the propane, um, takes about 20, 25 minutes for that to heat up that six gallon tank. Uh, it does cycle, so I would just use it as you need it uh, so to not waste any propane. And then their water pump switch is next, so you will have to turn that on if you're using the onboard water tank. If you're hooked up to the city water, that bypasses that whole system and just feeds it, so you no need for the water pump on that one. And then the only other button on the bottom row here is your awning. So that patio awning, you just push and hold the out button to extend that and then hold the in button to retract that. Uh, no slide outs on this unit, so those two are just gonna be blank right there. Above the cab is your cab over bed. This pad right here fills in this space, so all you have to do is pull that in, uh, push that down into place, and there is a safety net on here, so it's a seatbelt style buckle. Uh, those will buckle in um, on the wall on the side there. That just lifts this up, so if you have small children or whatever sleeping up there that they won't roll out of there. Moving back here to the house part, we have a pretty large U-shaped dinette. Uh, this does convert into a bed. Um, does have three seat belts in it as well. Um, if you are converting it into a bed, you're just going to remove this tabletop here. Just lift up on that to remove it. Two table legs. You just give those a little twist and pull those up. I'm going to set those out of the way. And then your tabletop, there's ledges, uh, wood ledges on the side and on the front here. 
Um, so you kind of lift the cushions up and out of the way. And then this should just slide into place. Just like that. And then you have two cushions back here. So this cushion will go here. And then this half circle will just fill in that sleeping area just like that. Across from your dinette is your kitchen area. Um, so you have a couple of cabinets up top here for storage. A uh, nice size sink, little drop down here for a sponge or a rag, uh, and then another storage compartment down below. Uh, microwave runs off a of run 10, so again, generator short power for that. A couple of uh, or three burners on your stovetop here and then your oven. Um, the burners light similar to a grill. Uh, this is uh, just a glass cover, so the first thing you want to do is lift that up and out of the way. To light the burners, you'll just um, turn the first three knobs uh, to high, and then you'll hit this spark button until the, the flame lights up there. There is a diagram for each one that shows you which burner you'll be lighting. And then the final one is to light your oven. So with this, you're just lighting the pilot light initially. Uh, so what you'll do is you'll turn that knob to the flame icon there, push that button in, and then you'll hit that spark button. In the oven, uh, you'll see the spark, and as soon as the pilot light lights, uh, you'll just turn your temperature knob, and then you'll see that whole burner light up there. There is a little bit of a step up into the bedroom area here. Uh, refrigerator, freezer runs off your house batteries 100% of the time. Right across from that, we have a wardrobe, uh, so a couple doors there, and then a couple of drawers down below. In your bedroom, you have your queen-size bed, and then bathroom is in the corner here. So you do have a full-size shower, pedal-style toilet, and sink in your bathroom. On your bedroom wall to the left of the entrance to the bathroom is your thermostat. So this is where you'll turn on your furnace and your air conditioner. So as you use this, you'll see there's a mode power button. So as you push that, it'll cycle through the options. So there's your fan setting, high or low, or auto. Recommend keeping that in auto uh, if you're using the furnace. Um, next is your air conditioner, and then you can use the buttons on the right-hand side to adjust the temperature. Then it'll go to your furnace. Again, they adjust the temperature there, and then push it again and to turn those off. Thank you for watching. We look forward to meeting you.